Lecture 4, Market Entry Strategies, Global Marketing Entry Strategies, Part 3. Franchising. Contract between a parent company, franchisor, and franchisee that allows the franchisee to operate a business developed by the franchisor in return for a fee and adherence to franchise-wide policies. Examples. The Body Shop. United Colors of Benetton. McDonald's. The Franchisor. Advantages. Low-cost market entry. Can expand very rapidly. More risk borne by the franchisee. The franchisee is better motivated to succeed. The franchisee has better knowledge of the local market. Many circumvent some legislation that creates barriers to foreign ownership. Disadvantages. Lower levels of control over the operation. The franchisee may become too powerful. May limit other methods of distribution. The franchisee, advantages, powerful brand name, buying into an already a successful operation, the parent company will provide the trading format, equipment and supplies, access to scale economies, marketing and promotion provided by the parent, training may be provided, less startup risk and easier access to financing. Disadvantages, the parent company may go bankrupt, something may happen to damage the parent company's image, the parent may not understand the need to adapt to local culture. The parent company may take other marketing action which will damage the franchisee. The franchisee may be able to obtain better supplies locally. The success of the franchisor can often mean increased fees. The franchisor may develop a local following but may still have to pay towards the cost of marketing nationally. Joint Venture Entry strategy for a single target country in which the partners share ownership of a newly created business entity. Advantages. Allows for sharing of risk, both financial and political. Provides opportunity to learn new environment. Provides opportunity to achieve synergy by combining strengths of partners. May be the only way to enter market given barriers to entry. Disadvantages requires more investment than a licensing agreement, must share rewards as well as risks, requires strong coordination, potential for conflict among partners if our objectives are incompatible. Partner may become a competitor. Strategic alliances. Parent company may go bankrupt. Parent company's image may get damaged. Parent may not understand need to adapt to local culture. Parent company may take other marketing action which will damage the franchisee. The franchisee may be able to obtain better supplies locally. The success of the franchisor can often mean increased fees. The franchisor may develop a loyal local following but may still have to pay towards costs of marketing nationally. Hierarchical modes. The firm completely owns and controls the foreign entry mode. Question is where the control lies which depends on which value chains functions can be transferred to the market. This diagram illustrates the variety of different structures of a hierarchical modes. From the top the flowchart illustrates that research and development, production, marketing sales and services are all based in the home country. The product slash service is delivered directly to customer. There would be domestic based sales representatives and manufacturers own sales force in host country. The second scenario is very similar except that the sales and service would be based in the host country. The third example from the top illustrates research and development and marketing in home country and the production, sales and services in the host country. The fourth scenario illustrates research and development and production in home country, marketing, sales and services would be in host country. The fifth scenario is where research and development, production, marketing, sales and service is in host country referred to as fully-fledged insider. The sixth and seventh flowchart diagrams illustrate two different transnational organization configurations. Foreign direct investment. Example, Nespresso. Full ownership of operations outside of home country forms. Merger slash acquisition, self-start entry, greenfield operations. Your due diligence needs to be thorough 
as you cannot afford to make the mistakes that Tesco, Fresh and Easy made in California, nor can you take the risk that Disney took with Euro Disney in Paris. Need an exit strategy if necessary. No reason to stay is a good reason to go and pull the plug on a non-profitable and failed GMS. Foreign divestment, when is the time to leave? Do you have an exit strategy? Feedback and constant monitoring is necessary, benchmarked against your GMS goals and objectives. Need to consider environmental stability, research and development intensity costs required over budget on costs. Country risks have changed since initial evaluations. Attractiveness of current operations. Evaluate economic performance and growth matched to objectives. Strategic fit. Corporate headquarters are not aligned with headquarters. Conglomerate parent disagreement. Therefore, unrelated subsidiary creates concern. Governance issues are in conflict, caused by cultural distance, joint venture conflicts, disagreements. Headquarters is acquired by a new company and lack of international experience. Summary. We are asking the how question on what is the most appropriate entry mode in the host country based on our thorough research. As a company, we need to consider the three factors, control, risk and flexibility, and how these factors align with our global marketing strategy in the chosen host country. We will also need to evaluate the various configurations and structure of the export mode, intermediary mode, and hierarchical mode. At what stage we want to implement these market entry strategies, and the amount of intermediaries we would consider to deliver our product slash service to the end customer. Taking into consideration the transactional costs and price profit efficiency for the firm and the end customer. This is also dependent on the amount of risk and control we are willing to trade off. Seminar Case, Walmart Walmart Globalization Case Study 1. What was Walmart's early global expansion strategy? Why did it choose to first enter Mexico and Canada rather than expand into Europe and Asia? 2. What cultural problems did Walmart face in some of the international markets it entered? 3. How was Walmart's entry into the UK with ASDA different? What was Walmart's strategy in the UK market?